Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game tonight as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel and Sebastian Crow, and we are joined today by our good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Veo Senya and Rudy Whitaker. And Joe Gorman playing Wrath and Pluto Jackson. It's going to be a big night tonight. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. So be sure to check us out on YouTube. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube and check us out as an audio only podcast as well. Before we dive into the D&D tonight, we got to discuss some scheduling. Uh, um, next week will be our last session before a short six-week hiatus for The Fate of Drakenheim, where uh, our very fine cast member, Joe Orgorman, will be uh, taking a couple weeks off uh, for some pretty big reasons. Joe? We're going to have a baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. Uh, my wife and I uh, couldn't be happier. So uh, we'll take a, a short break, but uh, I won't be disappearing. So uh, uh, just like Jill did with her little human. We will be back uh, on May 24th with Fate of Drakenheim uh, for those that are watching through live and, and joining us. But in the meantime, uh, Kelly and I and possibly Jill will be playing some more uh, some more games of, of In the World of Drakenheim with some very cool new stuff uh, and some good old friends as well. So stay tuned for more information on what we're going to be doing in the interim period, but there will still be streams. Most weeks, we'll probably, probably Kelly and I and Jill will take a, a week or two off in that period as well. But just bear bear with us, and then we will be back with Fate of Drakenheim on April. On sorry, May twenty fourth. And so, uh, to to be clear, this week and next week we'll still be at Fate of Drakenheim. Then we'll be off of the regular season just for the regular series for a couple weeks. So, hopefully, it all goes super smooth for you, Joe, and you get lots of sleep. And it's really, really easy. It's not stressful at all. Uh, and, and 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 you come back super refreshed and excited with your bigger family. <laughs> roll a d6. <laughs> <laughs> I got a four. Come on, six. Come on, six. Uh, a four means 50-50. You know, you're going <laughs> to... A lot of good, you know. There, there, there you go. So, with that, let us return to find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back. This is the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Veo, Sebastian, and Paluto had returned from their mission to Castle Draken to secure the shield of the Sacred Flame, the the sister, uh, the, the 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 shield brother to, pardon me, to the Blade Ignatius. The meanwhile. Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath have both have secured both the clock tower and the Drakenheim garrison, 
with some help from the Hooded Lanterns. Meanwhile, chaos erupts in the streets of Drakenheim, as it seems that the followers of the Falling Fire are making their own move towards the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio. As the flare resides out over the clock tower, Veo, Sebastian, and Pluto, you stand atop Shepherd's Gate as the flurry of activity of the Hooded Lanterns takes to re-fortifying this holding once more. They are clearing out the fallen, they are constructing hoardings and making the barricades that that were once erected around the gate once more, so they there's a few people that are digging ditches and moving rubble around so that they can be, be very sure that the roadway between Shepherd's Gate and the Drakenheim garrison is a secure pathway for them to move supplies and soldiers. Uh, that flare means that they captured the tower, right? Um, the, uh, several of the other hooded lanterns, um, th- look up as they see, see the flare, and, uh, even two of them say to each other, I'm pretty sure that flare means that they've captured the clock tower. Oh, impressive. First the garrison and now the clock tower. Wow, I guess they're actually pretty good at what they do. Maybe we can take a vacation. Where do you want to go? I, I'm not here. Anywhere, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> I've always wanted to see Caspia. What's that place like? Oh, Ooh. what a wonderful place. I will take you. I will yeah? take you to Caspia and I will show you. It is such a simple place. With, I mean, the Civil War is pretty much... <laughs> <laughs> at a somewhat of a standstill, you know? So it's a great time. Actually, we're really putting a lot of money into tourism now. So Oh, that's I'm I mean, I'm going to hold you to that as soon as this whole thing is over. Uh, you know, trip to Caspia. Um, I hear they have good gladiator arenas there. Yeah. Home is that right now, you know, we're the family's not on good terms. So Oh. I'll have to sort that With out. Who? The, uh, the the high priest, the high this, king, the high king. Yeah. Oh, that one. Mm. Yep. Not, uh, not is somebody like, are, are, is somebody doing something about this flare? Like, hey, is anybody going after the the clock tower? Are we going to check on them? Let's go. That's. It's, I think it's. Up. Oh, are we going to check on them? I All yell right. out to to the crew and I say. Soldiers, has anybody been sent to uh, support the, uh, well, the other ones? Um, so a pair of the the soldiers, um, one of the, the, the captains of the Hooded Lantern, um, a man named uh, Jacob, um, who, who was originally one of the captains that took over uh, Shepherd's Gate, says, Lord Commander, uh, from what we understand, the... The uh, our our orders from Elias, uh, the, from the lieutenant commander, were that um, they would either be sending out a group, or that it might even be you yourself going to respond. I was just going to say, if there isn't a group ready to go, and I just turn to Sebastian Puda, I say, "Shall we?" Well, yeah, we needed to talk to them. So, yeah, if they're they, at the tower, what do they call themselves? The Dust Wardens? Like yeah, Dust they, Wardens. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, like clean, they they kind of like. like because they go into like catacombs and tombs, so they're yeah. dust wardens. I'm pretty sure. And the yeah. the one has like really kind of salted pepper hair. That might be dust, not even gray hair. Yeah, it's probably where they got the name. <laughs> um, Jacob sa- uh, says, "Lord Commander, um, the the Lieutenant Commander and the other Hooded Lanterns have secured the path, uh, and we have already patrols running along." Um, along Shepherd's Way towards the Draconheim garrison. It should be safe travels from here to there, but you might want to tread carefully as you're heading through uh, through Market Street towards the clock tower. Um, it seems though we're, we're getting some scouting reports that there's some fighting happening in the streets right now. Um, so it might be a good time to move. It's the, we've only had a few patrols come by, but People have seen that they've seen a large group of the followers of the Falling Fire heading towards the cathedral, and it's stirred up quite a ruckus. The cathedral? 
That's not good. Why would they take the chance with Drakenheim like it is? But oh, I can I can think of a few reasons why Lucretia Matthias might want to get to the cathedral, and uh, it's kind of echoing my issues with this whole thing that we're doing. But hmm. that's neither here nor there. Um, Lucretia Matthias gets to the cathedral, gets all the relics, or at least some of the relics. I don't know. There's something about this. Hmm. I'm feeling. I got a bad feeling about this. It's curious, for sure. Well, we have two. We have two of the relics, Sebastian. She still hasn't acquired the third. Yeah. No, who may have it? Yes, Lucretia Matthias d- um, does have at least two, to your knowledge. She has the five flame peepers phylactery as well as uh, Vitruvius helm. Uh, where the other, the the, the scepter. Um, that is allegedly in possession of the Queen of Thieves. Yeah, I um, I think that it's actually in our best interest right now to leave these relics divided. Because if Lucretia... I don't know, I'm... The last thing we need is the followers of the Falling Fire resurrecting a dragon. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Especially since we're trying to get one of the relics back from her to put somebody on the throne. And I don't know, until until we figure out what our play is here, I'm just... She's making me nervous. Mm. Well, I think this is a good time then to head out and talk to the other group. Tell them what we know. Yeah. All right. I announce it to the the soldiers and say, we're headed out! Make sure you keep this area fortified. Thank you for all your hard work. Yes, sir. Get an extra snack. They all say as they salute. We shall, Commander. Um, and th- with with that, you take to the streets of uh, Drakenheim. Um, coming out through Shepherd's Gate, um, the, the Hooded Lanterns are still taking their time to get the gate itself back into working order working order so you take the stairs down through the um through the towers and out onto the streets where there are several hooded lanterns actually on horseback that you can see riding up and down the streets and there are uh soldiers that are posted all on the rooftops with bows and crossbows as a wagon rumbles towards uh out through the gate towards um uh the drakenheim garrison it's and laden with all kinds of supplies. Um, this this one, it's just a huge wagon with several barrels of clean water in it. Liquid gold in these parts. Um, and so as the supply wagons head down uh, the, the street, you're able to veer off and make your way through the various uh, streets of Drakenheim, which, Vale, you know this area now, like the back of your hand. All the shortcuts from the garrison to the clock tower are muscle memory for, for the group of you as you lead yourself lead the way down back alleys and side streets where you know there are some, some shortcuts, taking rooftops in one area and even um, kind of this small bit where you know you can cut through a couple basements that are all linked together to avoid any notice or detection. Um, by by this stage, you know this route so well that despite the dangers that anyone else might face moving through it, um, you you've basically you know it like the back of your hand. And so, it is um, not uh, I guess the back of your paw, Veo. Vale. Um, <laughs> it, it is um, only. Only a short trip at, before you arrive at Market Square, which is strangely deserted, um, and you look at the great cosmological clock tower, um, and you can see several of your pigeons fluttering around the top of the tower. Uh, they look rather agitated. Oh my gosh, what's going on with... <sighs> I hope Bobby's okay. He's, he's a really sensitive one. I mean, someone's in his any- nest, you know. Has anybody been by to feed those pigeons in a while? I mean, they can buy on their own. What do pigeons eat here. in Drakenheim? Oh, I guess there's lots of rats. Do pigeons eat rats? 
Anything that's not, I mean, they're the rats of the sky, so you know, they figure themselves out. <laughs> Is that cannibalism? Anyway. You're different enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you head towards the main doors of the, the clock tower, um, you can, uh, you enter through and you can see the, on the ground floor, are the remnants of several encampments of ratlings that have taken up residence in here, although um, it is now long abandoned. Um, it has now been abandoned. Um, you head up the clanking metal stairs of the internal part of the clock tower towards the, the clockworks, um, past the familiar sight of those strange automaton creatures, and through the... Um, through the rookery where you pass by the colossal corpse of a horrifically um, mutated ratling that has been slain recently. Um, and just as you take the ladder up to the loft, you begin hearing a little bit of chatter. And it is here on the opposite side where Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath, as the three of you um, are turn away from the flare and take the time to recuperate from your from your wounds. Is there anything that you'd like to say to each other before Sebastian, Veo, and Pluto arrive? So we had a rest? Yes, you would have had at least an opportunity for a short rest. Uh, did we purge my contamination? <laughs> well, Helm, I don't think we can. You would become feeble and useless. You would expel most of your insides, and you would become weak beyond your means. It's probably better that you just stay glowing for a little bit longer. I, I do have to say glowing is not my favorite look, but um, I suppose it will do for now until we get me back to uh, the garrison. Yeah, just a little bit longer. You'll be all right. I've seen worse. We've been through worse. As the three of you discuss and finish up your rest, you you hear um, the sound of someone climbing up the ladder towards the towards the loft. Oh, by the gods! I can't I, fight anymore, and I pull out my sword. I bring my axe up, ready. As the hatch opens. And who would have gone first? Oh, Sebastian. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> just not even caring. I just fling the hatch open. Sebastian flings the hatch open to see three the th three adventurers bearing their weapons at, <laughs> at him. And the three of you, uh, and then Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath, you see this red-headed half-elf with, with a pair of goggles just fly open the hatch. <laughs> who goes there? Oh, wait, spirits, I guess. Spirits, why'd you do that? Couldn't you announce yourself before you come up the hatch with... You saw what was down there. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's me, Sebastian Crow. Um, you know, sorcerer extraordinaire. Uh, just here to make sure everything's all good. Are you the relief? We sent the flare. Uh, I, yeah. Um, I mean... We've we've been trying to catch up with you guys, but you guys are moving pretty fast, I'd say. Taking oh. back the garrison, taking back the clock. Good work. Um, we said we were going to help the city, and obviously we're helping the city. Sebastian just walks into the room and starts looking around at the tables and things. And uh, under a few scraps, he uh, he pulls out a bottle of wine and dusts it off and pours himself a glass and starts sipping on it. He's like, I knew I left that somewhere. <laughs> As Sebastian comes into the room, he, um, he is followed by Paluto and Veo, uh, who c clamor up the ladder into uh, into the loft. Veo, what is the first thing that you do when you when you get up into the loft? I wave to uh, Wilhelm and say, "Your Highness, it's nice to see you." You know, and then I rush over to my pigeons and I'm just like, babies, how are you? And I count them and I'm looking for them. Um, 
There's a uh, there's a bit of a miscount as you uh, as you go go through. Spin uh, and pesto. Bobby, he's the one I was worried about. Has anybody seen Bobby? Um, you named the pigeons. I uh, yeah. Don't you name your pets? All of these pigeons are your pets. Oh, Where's yeah. Bobby? Bobby. Um, <laughs> Did someone say something happened to Bobby? It's the first thing that Blue says when he comes up. Um. Yeah, he's he's this little cute choppy one. I mean, he's he's the best at finding food. Oh, uh, uh, the the cat. Um, there is the cat in the the room that is cleaning its paws and licking its mouth. This, this, the, did this cat eat Bobby? Who's, and I turn to Raph and I say, did your cat eat Bobby? Uh. <laughs> Are you addressing Bruce? I'm addressing you as his owner. He has no owner. I am but a servant to the great Bruce. He has shown me the cosmos. I have seen through the keyhole. There is so much more to this being than what he is showing you. If you open your eyes, you will see that he was merely hungry and he chose to eat the one you call Bobby. The cat, uh, Packs a couple coughs and a bit of chewed meat with some feathers stuck in it flies out of its mouth. Bruce, finish uh, your dinner. <laughs> vale, we were unaware that um, anybody owned these pigeons. I probably would have tried harder to stop. I mean, pigeons are vermin. You realize this, right? They're they're no better than rats with wings. You One are... of the best mail systems we have in Drakenheim. There is no, there's no other way to send messages. I mean, I guess people ride them around, but uh, we use. <laughs> Will Wilhelm looks out the window at like the ruined city, and he's like, "Are are you sending a lot of messages in Drakenheim? <laughs> ooh, ooh, Not a lot, ooh. but when I need to, you know, it's just easier than you know sending people out and them getting eaten <laughs> by rats." R Raph, don't magic people have a way of not needing pigeons? Yes, there is no need for pigeons when I can invade your thoughts and leave my message in your dreams. What we're trying to say is we're sorry. It was a misunderstanding. We thought that the pigeons were here for eating by Bruce, I suppose. Bruce is not sorry, but he will... He will, now knowing that these are not mere pigeons, but some kind of communication device for you, um, we use sending stones. They don't fly as much. Uh, we'll start, he will stick to rattlings. I appreciate then. at least the consideration that to leave my pigeons alone. I'm surprised you Pigeons are, are friends, not food. You you do not feast upon the pigeons. I look at you and you look like you are quite hungry. I mean, I'm always hungry, but <laughs> you know, it's, there's always more to find than just pigeons. Bruce, if I didn't have my pigeons, I wouldn't an, have any other friends. <laughs> Bruce also has an insatiable hunger, a thirst that cannot be quenched. Bruce, I can I'm, relate. But, I'm sorry. Are you? You're here to relieve us, yes? Well, we came to talk to you. We wanted to talk to the group. We, we wanted to update you on the information we found out on our last mission. We've got a lot to say. Um, I mean, I guess this is the best place for a meeting says Sebastian. We used to live here. This was our vantage point. Veo's old stomping grounds. 
Uh, you used to live here, Wilhelm says back. I'm trying to differentiate who I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the only place I could get to above the haze. Why do you think I survived so long in the city? Right. Uh, we we knew that you held this position for some time, and this was sort of a base of operation for you specifically, uh, Commander. But uh, it's it's definitely in ill. Like, it could it could use a fixer upper, I suppose, before uh, the hooded lanterns retake this position. We're we're going to use it as sort of a central base, so to speak, to um, to be able to move further into the city, as it was the original intent, I believe, with the three of you owning it. Uh, we definitely have much to talk about. Uh, it's been it's been a little bit. Um, how did your mission go? Hey, man, I think you're glowing. <laughs> yeah, you yes. okay? We... Oh. That looks like some pretty advanced delirium sickness. There was a rat in the downstairs. Uh, I don't know. You may have passed by it. It was large. Uh, but not only that, there was another rat. It was not large. It was very small. And it bit me. And it was not good. It, uh... Yeah, it's... I it's have to cool. tell you, I, I can relate. The rats here are friggin' awful. Uh, I've been bit. I have a lot of scars. And I just start showing... <laughs> <laughs> they, when they get in the armor and and uh they they just gnaw had some run-ins oh that's I feel you man that, that's horrible I, pluto i how many rats have you had to fight more than i can count and i've lost exactly 100 men i can count that to <laughs> the rats <laughs> the much more accurate number Wow, I mean, yeah, we've rats had a few run-ins. We've had a few run-ins with the rats. It's uh, it seems like a bit of a vermin problem here in Drakenheim. Uh, you guys handled that one downstairs pretty well. That was. A I big mean, one. pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you're... we had to take quite a few swaps at him, but uh, yeah, there certainly is a problem with ratlins here. I mean, it's not that we haven't seen ones like them outside of Drakenheim, but. There's an infestation here, and, and they're glowing, using delirium. They're smart little vermin. Uh, perhaps we should get this uh, this meeting underway. Uh, if you guys give me a bit, you you can keep chatting. I'm going to start putting up a bit of a barrier for us, um, just so that everybody's aware. We're going to be discussing some private information, and it's best that we leave this uh, just for this group here. We've had some issues in the past with imposters. So we have to take precautions. Imposters. Especially with who we're dealing with. Yeah. We'll get to that. Just uh, give me a bit of time. And Sebastian starts walking around the room um, with his staff. And as he taps the staff on the ground... Um, purple glowing runes are appearing in the ground behind him and he starts to uh, ritually cast Tiny Hut. Okay. Mm. Are there are there any other precautions you would like to take against impos imposter Sebastian? Um, I think that we have a plan here with Ignatius <laughs> was going to help, I believe. Wrath uh, is also curiously curiously watching you cast your rituals and he starts doing his version of rituals where he's spreading cat treats <laughs> around like kind of following you around to I, I, uh continue the tiny hut at Mayo one point i stop you around eating the cat <laughs> treats yeah <laughs> <laughs> where do you get these things they taste so good I, I, Veo, as you as you take one of the cat treats little you, you know that deep growl hiss that cats make that's the noise that Bruce makes at you when you take one of the treats I that, hiss back in <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate here Rath what are you doing I'm trying to help the ritual spell can be cast twice as fast when there are two of us I that's think not 
how magic works? No, it actually absolutely is how magic works. If the the if mages is that work, how I I, yeah, I go yeah Sebastian, no, is that no. how magic if, works? if um one uh one thing that is actually well known amongst the Amethyst Academy is if you've ever looked at the core rules and been like, wow, crafting magic items takes a really, really long time. But what if people work together? That's kind of the whole philosophy behind the Amethyst Academy. So the Academy does teach mages techniques to work together. Um, and probably both Wrath and, and Sebastian never really learned this stuff. <laughs> but, okay. but, um, but, Often, um, Wizards of the Amethyst Academy will we roll solo. Uh, traditionally, um, using uh, formations of five or eight wizards working together, uh, either forming a pentagram or an octagon, um, produce really, really much faster results for casting ritual spells or creating magic items. And these techniques in the Amethyst Academy are part of why they're able to manufacture so many great magical effects. All right, so what I imagine happening is I turn and I go, that's not how magic works, and then the spell finishes. <laughs> and, I, and I look around and I go... Oh, I never paid attention. I was never very good at the group projects. I don't think that was supposed to work. I was really taking a swing for it. I've never uh, tried that before. Thanks, Raph? I don't know how to accept a thank you, so you're welcome. Um, Can I touch your staff? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, hold, I hold the staff out. Fascinating. It's uh, broken and mended. You know, it's 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 really powerful. You you should see some of the stuff that this staff can do. I can feel it. Yeah, that's. And I go. I wouldn't let him touch that. You know, he he barely can make oars, let alone touch the fancy staff that you have. So it's Rudy. like you're giving a a kid a sharp object. You just don't do it. All right. Man, Rudy, weren't you swallowed by a giant rat moments ago? Just another day in the business that we're in. Wait, Rath, why are they bothering you about making oars? I don't know. I, they, you know, they have I carpenters failed. for making oars, uh, I, Rudy. I not summon oars for rowboats, no, and it is my greatest failure. Yeah, go find a, a bard to make you oars. Like that's not no, no, Rath, you don't. You don't need to make people oars. Like, Sebastian, can you make oars? No. Why would I make oars? I can make fireballs. I can turn people into shadowy creatures. What are they teaching I, you I, I, these I, days when they can't even do some yeah, simple magic I, and make oars? They are, not, so, oars. they are not sufficient when I can warp something's mind to do right? our bidding. Yet I cannot summon a simple <laughs> piece of wood shaped like a paddle. Yeah, no, no, we have people to make wood. We're here to change the world, Wrath. You don't need to answer to, to ore makers. And no, no, that's... Can I, have, can I have create, some... <laughs> using prestidigitation, I create a tiny magical ore in my hand? Uh, as, as Veo? As, sorry, as Rudy, I can create okay. a... I mean, technically I can do it with both. As Rudy, yeah. I'm like... Listen, I can make an ore, and I make just like a tiny one in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I minor illusion an ore. Oh, see, Rafa, all, he can't do it. <laughs> we're all magical now. It, no, and I just, I wave it away, and it kind of disappears in a puff of purple smoke as I kind of wave it. I'm like, no, okay. Listen, we're getting sidetracked already. Raf, thank you for helping me with the ritual. Nobody, don't worry about making oars. We we can find oars. Oars are. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Have you seen my cat? It's literally ever, right there. You ever want to talk to him, Bruce? You and I and Bruce should sit down and have a quick, a nice chat one day. Y yeah. Um. Sure. I I mean. Does He's your cat talk? Mentor. Yeah. And you see Veo <laughs> pop up and say. Listen, cats are the greatest, but I wouldn't worry. I worry a bit about how much you like your cat. Is uh, this tiny hut going to help us not be seen or heard? 
I don't really know. Well, the tiny hut, you would also know that the presence of the haze in the middle of the city does shield you from divination magic itself. So having a meeting here in the clock tower and also being protected by a tiny hut, it's a pretty good provision if you're worried about someone magically spying on you. Wouldn't and the the and if you're worried about someone physically spying on you as well, well the tiny hut is extra insurance as well. So between those two things, you can be pretty uh, uh, reasonably secure. Well, uh, now that that's in order, was there anything else? Yes, we must all pass the test of Ignatius. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Don't rush. Sorry, it's been a very long few days. I am glowing. I am. I have many wounds. I'm a little yeah. tired. Yeah, um, it's one of the... I pioneered Aquarks Burgo. I know a little something about the side effects. <laughs> okay. I right. ruined armor, okay? Um. <laughs> I'm not allowed to use that anymore. It's officially contaminated, like beyond contaminated. Like it's uh, like it's like center of the meteor and contaminated. Okay, I ruined that stuff. Uh, and I is this part of the test? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just my gripes. And uh, I I I reveal Ignatius. The blade fl Ign the blade flashes with radiant light as it projects the zone of truth. You all will speak your true name to Ignatius, and he will tell us if you are truthful or you speak lies. Um, all right. I, I am... am Pluto Jackson. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> Sorry. Pluto, he's the king. I will tell you when it's your turn. Now you speak, and I point at <laughs> Well. Um, my name is Wilhelm von Kessel. Great. And, I mean, do we do the... Do you want to try to save against it? No. Great. Uh, I point at, um... At Rudy. Speak your name. My name is Rudy Whitaker. Is it and supposed then, to do anything if if it, if I tell the tr truth? Or... You would yeah, feel yeah. it in your soul, and yeah, it would. I don't, I don't feel nothing. Ignatius would yell at you. You can feel the magic compelling you to tell the truth. Um, in fact, um, Rudy is a short form of your name, correct? Yes. Yes. So it actually, what is Rudy's full name? Rudicel. Yeah. So as even as the words come out. <laughs> Rudicell comes out over Rudy. <laughs> Rudicell Whitaker. Wow, that is strong magic. <laughs> is it working? And then uh, I, I go around to uh, Veo. I point Veo, out Veo Senya. And Sebastian. We've done this. We've done this. My name's time. Sebastian Crow. And I am Wrath. Also, a nickname. I forget my full name. <laughs> I think it's just Raphael. Raphael. Short. Raphael. <laughs> he, he, his mind is so muddled with um, Bruce, Bruce has to remind him. Wil Wilhelm pauses for a second and it's just like, I completely forgot your name was Raphael. I just... <laughs> wow. I... I... I haven't said it in a while. It's been some time. I don't think I've ever really truly said it out loud. Wrath suits you, don't worry. Ignatius made me say it. So, what is it that we needed to talk about? Are we inside the tiny hut? Yes. Okay. Um, so, Theo says, uh, we met with Lucretia Matthias, and she, well, to start, she wouldn't, 
give us the phylactery right off the bat. She kind of made these conditions that we have to go get these other relics in order for her to give them over peacefully. And just to just to give a, a tradition to that, the first condition that she actually gave you was that you would need to take the sacrament. She offered that. So under the, the, the compulsion of the zone of truth, ah. you would need to say that too. So, so first she wanted to put delirium in our chests. We weren't too keen on that. <laughs> yes, I I don't know enough about Lucretia Matthias to pass full judgment, but from what I've seen of delirium, the idea of jamming it into your chest does not sound great. Pluto, I understand that you are actually sorry pluto I, I i wanted to ask you do you think lucretia matthias is dangerous yes there's no doubt that she is one of the more dangerous people of drakenheim she is considered at one time an ally and there is a mutual trust. However, she has plans. And currently, as you can see, we carry not only Ignatius, but the shield of St. Vitruvio. And I hold up the shield. Do you know what Lucretia wanted with the relics? What her plan was? She spoke simply. She intends to raise an ancient dragon whose sole purpose is to purge the city of the delirium and turn it into... In Lucretia's least... case, her intent is for the dragon to protect the pilgrims. Sorry, protect the pilgrims, yeah. turn the delirium into the golden delirium that you may have seen in the chests of her followers and I, I I think I can speak candidly when I say wait for the world to end um, alright well and she wanted the seals or she wanted the relics in exchange for the seal of Draconite. So she wanted two, yeah. two of the relics. She does intend her. If we relinquish her as the keeper of the phylactery, it is her only way to restore you to the throne. And she will not relinquish the phylactery without a trade. Hmm. She is dangerous, but she is considered at this time neutral. It would have been beneficial if uh, Lucretia Matthias had been brought in. I, I don't know her. I don't know this religion. I, I, I have very little to work on here. Rule number 87 is seek to understand those who see things differently than yourself. And although... What she's doing is scary. I, I seek to understand it. But at the same time, I mean, rule number 81 is hold people accountable to their actions. And she seems to be intent on keeping delirium around and jamming it into people's chests, which um, seems to work for some people. But I, I, I just imagine that there's some other consequences here it's my run-ins with the following fire or the falling fire have been um troubling although again those people that i did meet were under the influence of delirium to an extent that lucretia matthias hopefully isn't 
she she's very strong in her faith and what she believes in. It's hard to deter her from from anything other than following that. But I don't think her goals line up with ours. She'd let this world go to waste just to send it out in chunks to save the rest of the cosmos. But she's not willing to give this world a, a try to save it. And we are. Sebastian knows what she's seen. Have you seen it, Sebastian? Sebastian chimes in here. I, yeah, after what I saw in the meteor heart, I um, I don't know. I I don't see how me and Lucretia saw the same thing, and one of us decided that the world ending was okay, and the other like, I I don't see it. I don't see the idea that she has. She wants to let the world destroy itself in hopes that we send out a cure, but in the process we doom everybody on this planet. And I just, I can't get behind that. Not after what I saw. Um, yeah, she is. The, the nice thing is, is that she is predictable, but she is also very dangerous. And I know you say, bring her in Wilhelm but that might be more difficult than you may think. Yes, and I do think it's doubtful that we will change her mind on her uh, visions and beliefs. Uh, rule number 93, you cannot reason someone out of a belief that they did not reason themselves into. If this is her conviction, if this is what she believes, if this is her path, we're not going to change her mind on it, but... We're going to need to get her to agree to give us the phylactery if we are to proceed with our plan. But... Well, y'all know her best. Is she gonna get in the way of Wilhelm getting on the throne? She won't... I don't think she would get in the way if we give her what she wants. Although... I am... We need to know where this other piece of the puzzle is. Uh, Sebastian chimes in. Well, one other thing to note is uh, she did ask George to take the sacrament in order for her to be our ally. So, Wilhelm, there's a good chance she's going to ask the same thing of you. Yes, the sacrament. We've seen. We've seen what... We've seen those that have survived, but we've also seen those that haven't. Has it occurred to anybody that perhaps Lucretia Matthias and the followers of the Falling Fire are a unique mutation? They've jammed delirium into their chest. Perhaps instead of turning into a monster on the outside, perhaps it's influencing them in, in other ways. Is, it, is this possible? Is this something we've considered? Ao chimes in. We've seen them do this for years and, and nothing come about it. Who knows how it could be affecting them? We've seen how delirium affects so many others in the haze. Mm. There's no telling how far their mutations have gone, if any, though. We've and also seen what the golden delirium does. It is so unique. It 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 is... There, there's no chance that the three of us would be here if it wasn't for her. What well, you do all know that as well that the number of folk, people, the followers of the Falling Fire who have taken the sacrament, is only a fraction of the entirety of the people that are now follow following the 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 calling. So it's there's more than just those people as that are part of the followers of the Falling Fire, right? Mm -hmm. What of this final relic? What of this last piece of the puzzle? That's where we may need some help. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Well, um, there is someone that you may not have met in the city yet. She goes by 
checks checks around. <laughs> we have a lot of have a lot of anxiety when I think about her. She is she she is cunning. She is dangerous. She's so powerful. Sneaky. She's everywhere except when we need her to be right there and then she's not there. <laughs> it's oh, uh, so frustrating that I just want to I just want to oh, oh my gosh. Who? The you didn't queen even of thieves. <laughs> oh. I've heard um, one of the most dangerous adversaries that we have ever faced. And and sh- it's just mind-boggling that somebody would go under the moniker Queen of Thieves and and not expect terrible <laughs> like how do you get away with I mean I guess she's just very upfront about who she is. There's a rumor floating around. I I heard it earlier. I don't believe it, though. Uh, there was somebody... Somebody informed me that it's assumed that the Queen of Thieves could be Katarina von Kessel. No. Who would be Wilhelm's cousin? Um, Sebastian chimes in. I, I'm pretty sure without a doubt that it's Katarina von Kessel. I mean, but we tried saying her name and it didn't do anything. So we've we've tried to kill her. We've tried to reason with her. She is backstabbing. She is power hungry. And she is the only she is the next clue in where the last relic of St. Vitruvio is. And if we don't get our hands on it and the Christian Matthias does. Well, then we don't have a chance of, we don't we don't have a bargaining chip. Well, I mean, you say this Queen of Thieves is so mysterious and yada yada, but we're supposed to get this relic from her. She's just going to give it up? Well, actually, we, um, I, I don't know how much you know about our recent adventure, Sebastian chimes in. Um, we went to Castle Draken and we actually found a secret stash of the Queen of Thieves in Oh, her... made it to Castle Draken already? Oh, yeah. We've we've been there a couple, a few times now. Uh, you know, it's Veo's old home, so, you know, we just went to see how it was doing. And we fought some demons and uh, stole some things and found a shield. It, it was, you know, regular day in Drakenheim. I mean... You know, not to brag, but I mean, while well, you guys are busy uh, cleaning up a clock tower, we we stormed in and fought our way through um, an army of very scary demons, probably much scarier than the rat downstairs. Not not bragging, just saying. An army of demons. <laughs> army of demons, probably. You expect me to believe that? I'm still under the um, the effects of the 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 truth, so I'm like, it was a whole army. There had to be at least one or two that we killed i tried to say way more um there was two yeah it was not an army and the the, the zone of truth reveal is is very clear as you go to say the words army it was a handful i uh, sebastian's struggling he's like trying to lie really hard he's like not to brag but we fought one or two demons they we walked past the others. I gambled with my friend's souls. Oh. We have also traversed Wrath uh, expands um, the depths of Castle Draken, but not on this plane of existence, but on another. We um, helped seal the creatures. I closed Wrath. the door. You, you closed the door? I closed the door to the other world. It can be opened again. Oh. We have been um, in the depths of the city. Wrath, do you know how to teleport? I, I, he looks blankly ahead. <laughs> okay. Yes. Ra- Rath, follow along with me for a second here. Um, we found Maybe. the Queen of Thieves. Yes. 
Rath, are you still thinking about the first question I, I asked? Yes, I am still <laughs> thinking about that first question. And to answer it, yes. Okay, stay with me here. Stay with me. Okay. But I can I can't teleport very far. I'm sorry. Do you want me to expand on my answer, or is that sufficient? We're good. We're good. I think awesome. we have it covered regardless. Um, but it's important to know what tools we have at our disposal. Um, in with the Queen of Thieves things, we found a book that contained teleportation circle codes for multiple locations one of which might be the Queen of Thieves' secret hideout. We think that that might be where the relic is. How do you know the relic's there? How do you even know it's with the Queen of Thieves? All signs that we have, and Lucretia Matthias herself believes this to be true. And for all the, of the bad things that Lucretia Matthias does and all of the delirium jamming into chess that she does, She's a rather honest person and rather resourceful person. So if Lucretia Matthias says that she thinks the final relic is with the Queen of Thieves, this is a relic that Lucretia Matthias cares a lot about. I don't see why she would lie to us with that information. Plus, the Queen of Thieves loves collecting relics. She loves collecting important artifacts. The more important things that she has her hands on, the more val the, the more leverage she has over the important figures in Drakenheim, which uh, for what I know about the Queen of Thieves, loves having leverage. And finally, we found it's 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 only a clue. We're following a clue here. It's a lead, but in this book there was one teleportation circle that was not a known location. It was just called Refuge. Where would you hide important relics if you're the Queen of Thieves who has gone into hiding and you have a place that you've kept secret? It was hard work getting that book, by the way. There was, I had to turn into a cockroach, or no, my familiar turn. Somebody was a cockroach. It's get, it gets confusing with familiars because I was in the familiar who was a, anyway the point I is did, there i was, just want to say that i was a rat for several days and i became one with them <laughs> Continue. i lived and ate also refuge could also be a synonym for poop a, 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 noted a noted um, yes, thank this you could be, this could just be a teleportation circle to uh some kind of dispensary this guy Sebastian, so what you're saying is you found this book, some magical codes to get you to some refuge that you never heard of before, the Queen of Thieves, who seems to be a bit mysterious and, and, and shady. I think we need to pause for a second before we go running in there, because who knows what kind of trap she set up. Or True. we go in there, we murder her. And we take back this relic that we need to put Wilhelm on the throne. I uh, actually, Wilhelm chimes in. I, if the Queen of Thieves is suspected to be Katarina von Kessel, I would really prefer it if we didn't murder her yet. I would prefer her brought in. I understand how dangerous she is, but if I do have a living relative, want to talk to her before we decide what to do with her. She'll mm -hmm. probably end up in prison. But I think it's fair that we bring her in for questioning and find out what we can. If she has as many connections as you all are saying, it it's an important asset to gain as much information from her as possible. Also, I'm sorry, but most of the Von Kessels are dead. It's in my best interest, I, I just want to see. I want to know before we decide if her fate is to see the sword or the guillotine or the hangman's noose before we uh, before we go down that path. I just want. I guess if I, yeah, if if I'm being honest, I want to know if it is my cousin. Hmm. Does, does Sebastian have anything to respond to with Cat specifically? Um, yeah, I also kind of want her brought in alive. I mean, I 
I, I feel like maybe there's... I don't know. I want to believe that the person I knew is still in there. She's shown no sign of it. It's just... Maybe it's a fool's errand. I just really want to believe that the Katarina that I knew is, is in there. Well, listen. Before we go in all, you know, guns blazing, I think just like any military advancement, we got to send some scouts in. We got to take a look and see. If you guys are so sure that this relic is there, we need to... We need to go in first and get some confirmation to know if it's even worth, you know, risking our our necks for. It, It's true. We don't actually know what the refuge teleportation circle is going to bring us to. So we might need to do a scouting mission first. Uh, we're going to need some magic. So, I mean, I, I can I can help with the scouting mission. Wrath, if you can help me out, we can we can get us there. Well, you'll need someone to watch your backs on the scout mission, too. I can go um, with you. At the same time, there is another matter that I actually think is of extreme importance that I need to bring up here. Before we go running off after the Queen, we still haven't decided what to do with these relics of Lucretia Matthias. But before we decide that, there is another party that is going to be interested in all of this. And that's the Silver Order. We haven't spoken to them. I, uh, Pluto, <laughs> I understand that you had dealings with um, the late Theodore Marshall. Yes. There was a, uh, a duel. Under... Uh. Caspian standards. I, I think it was Illyrian standards. Actually, Illyrian standards. I won, and that's why we don't know about him anymore. And you won the duel fair and square, and they still decided to march on track. Like I've, I've heard stories that this might have been the instigator for this whole mess. Well, uh, but if it was, also did some stuff. Hmm. Well, I mean, we started. There, turns it's in. The, distracting. <laughs> Wilhelm, one thing you need to know is the the funny thing about an Illyrian duel is it's the most honorable form of dueling across the continent, but nothing has ever been settled with an Illyrian duel. <laughs> it always Illyrian duels always make things worse. The um because uh they they're they're just honor demands retribution. And that's mm. the problem with an Illyrian duel. The problem with an Illyrian duel is that honor demands retribution. There's retru no problem with an Illyrian duel. <laughs> it has settled many matters over many years. Look at Caspia. Look at Caspia in all of its glory. Caspia the Illyrian... has Caspian duels. <laughs> yeah, the only time Illyrian duel, duels have affected Caspia is when they've come and murdered your lords and kings. Look, we're not here for a history lesson, okay? We're here to talk about why the Silver Order is mad at us. And the thing is, is that they do have some... There was an escalation, okay? And I don't know, Sebastian had sort of like an incident and a lot of paladins died. They, they were saying that they were going to fight us all, okay? And all I did was cast a little spell <laughs> and they all died. And he saved Problem me. solved. He saved me and it just happened that way. All right. So uh, Sebastian... You're probably out of negotiations with um, with Illyria on this matter. Uh, you seem like a problem waiting to happen. Uh, no offense. He sometimes gets a bit hot headed. It's, it's yeah, his nature. We, look, I know you're new here. You're new to this whole scene, but 
this we had to do what we had to do mm-hmm. the thing is is that they are marching on this city and we have to find a way to make amends and no. what happened in the past happened in the past that was like months ago like we have to move forward from this because we all want the same thing here's what i'm hearing and i'm starting to put this together um veo pluto sebastian you want to go after the relic of the queen of thieves We need to do a scouting mission first. That's going to require magic, it seems. So, Wrath and Sebastian, I think that you could be up to lead the the mission. Um, Rudy, would you mind accompanying them? Of course. I can't leave these two squishies to be on their own. What if they get into some sort of trap? I, I think that it would be safer for everybody if uh, Rudy, who is the best fighter out of everyone here, obviously, is... is whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, this fine gentleman over here seems very strong and capable and sounds like he's had a few good uh, monsters under his belt. But, I mean, I, I also can't leave you alone to... Look at you, you're glowing and, and affected by delirium. I'm I'll, only going to leave you with someone I trust to be able to protect you. Uh, here's, here, I think that we can kill two birds with one stone, um, so to speak. Uh, no offense, Veo. Pigeon's great. Um, Pluto, you're directly involved with this, and as a representative of Caspia, I actually think that we need you to be a little diplomatic. And Veo, I know that a, re- um, a a stealth mission would usually be up your alley, but since it's only a scouting mission, and as you are the one of the representatives, one of the the holders of a seal of Drakenheim, the current Lord Commander, and the daughter of the former steward of Drakenheim, I think that Pluto, Veo, and myself should maybe make a trek out to Ophelia Reed and see what it is that they want to put this war behind us. Pluto, a chance for you to apologize, see how we can make amends, and at the same time, we can begin scouting this refuge once we've determined what the course of action is here. We can reconvene and decide our next course of action. All right. I, we, we go out. We have a, I have to talk to them. They, they, the breakdown has been extremely hard on my family. The, as I said, my, my, my family is being ostracized by the high King. There's so much pressure. If if there's any way I can start to repair that relationship, I mm. I can put aside some of my my differences, and hopefully they can too, and show them that we're you know I carry the Ignatius, I carry uh, the shield of Saint Vitruvio, I I I'm basically a paladin. I think that's like the only requirements to be a paladin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think with the current political state, this, again, I can't pass final judgment on Lucretia Matthias yet, but as it stands, Lucretia Matthias represents a dangerous new religious following that only involves Drakenheim and Delirium as the core of its beliefs. Right now, we have Illyrians marching on Westamar, who will go to war with us if we do not settle that. This war has caused problems between the Jackson family and the rest of Caspia. So if we can make amends, we could potentially start the uniting of Illyria, Caspia, and Westamar against a common foe, which is the problems being caused by 
delirium. It probably isn't a perfect plan, but we need to do what we can to not let war fall on an already crumbling Westamar. So inspired all right. by your leadership, Wilhelm. I cast Inspiring Leader. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm hearing, I, just so that I summarize, it seems like you guys have a, a bit of a, a plan to split up and divide and conquer here. If I'm correct, me if I'm wrong here. Veo, Wilhelm, and Paluto will travel from Drakenheim to the front lines where the Illyrians are marching to seek a Ophelia Reed and try to negotiate. Meanwhile, Rudy, Wrath, and Sebastian are going to investigate this refuge teleportation spell. Is that correct? Is that what you guys want to do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. And so... These are the questions that I need to know for, for myself. In this process, Pluto, are you going to... Uh, um, so, you currently have the two of the seals of St. Vitruvio, uh, Pluto. Um, are you going to bring them with you? Ooh, good question. Come back to me. Okay, and this refuge, do, do any of you know the teleportation circle or teleport spells between any of your characters? Like somebody did. <laughs> I feel like... Is, is teleport like... a ritual? No, it is not. Um, so the first thing Wrath will do is consult the book of the book that he discovered um, on the warlock that really did a number on. <laughs> I feel like there was something, maybe I might be making this up. There's scroll. Didn't we have a I, scroll? There was either a scroll or I think there might have been mention of it being in my mother's book and I was going to, and Sebastian was going to work on that. Or was it in the book? I feel like we found so something. So we have the Katarina. spell book from Skewer. So the first thing I would do is check that. But yes, we also... there, I, I believe you did find oh, two scrolls. Two scrolls of yeah. teleport. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, but that was in the Queen of Thieves or what we assume is the Queen of Thieves things. Stash. Yes. Yeah. Her stash. We found yeah. uh, two scrolls of teleport. Yeah. So yeah, those were in her stash, but none of you can cast the spell at either teleport or teleportation circle yourselves. No, uh, so we might, uh, before we leave, we might want to talk to Eldrick and River and maybe nice. see if they can uh, get us get us some extra teleport. What level spell is it? Teleport is seventh. And teleportation Ooh. circle is fifth. Like one, what we could do is use one of our rings of spell storing and have them cast the teleportation circle in mm -hmm. it as a mm -hmm. way to get there and then we could use the teleport as a way out yeah so we'll we'll meet with um eldrick and river first to get both wrath and wrath has a ring yeah yeah does wrath um <laughs> academy mage wrath does he... academy mate yeah listen i don't know how far you made it in the academy um yeah, so I think uh, I. we'll uh, we'll get both rings so that we have two castings of teleportation circle, as well as the two scrolls. That way, there's the uh, investigation mission, and then if we need to get back, we can do that as well. Okay, uh, that uh, that sounds very good. Um, if that is your your plan, when do you want to start? And is there anything else you want to do before you prepare? Well, Wilhelm needs rest. to take a few, probably like a couple days of downtime mm -hmm. to uh, stop glowing. Uh, probably go back to the garrison and, uh, you know, recuperate. Can mm -hmm. we hear the fighting on the um, tower? The, the tiny hut blocks 
that for you. It's like a soundproof. Yeah. Room. Yeah. And yeah. Like so yeah, curtains that, on the inside. That you have not investigated at all. But think about what you will have a couple days of downtime because yes, Wilhelm will need at least three days to recuperate after the contamination is purged from his system. Uh, so mm. think about what, what you might want to do with your couple days of downtime. And I think also think about which group we're going to follow first, but we will decide that after our break. And we are back from our short rest. We have noshed on our consumables and restocked our potions, and we're going to play some more D&D. So, your action plan ahead of you. The group... Um, you, the, the group can opt to uh, spend uh, a long rest in the clock tower before heading back in the morning, or with strength in numbers, you could opt to head back to the garrison or to Camp Dawn uh, right away, and then set out from there. What would you like to do? Um, I think... So we had a short rest, right? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. um, Draken, or Dust Wardens. Dust Wardens. The Dust Wardens are pretty beat up. The Draken Force, less so. Uh, yeah, so if Wilhelm is going with uh, Pluto and Veo, you know, they're all nice and chipper, but Wilhelm, Wilhelm's going to need three days before we set out on our mission. Yeah, just in, in before you take that time, are you going to, like, are you going to head back to the garrison? Do you want to check in with anybody? Do you want to do anything with your downtime before your group split up on these missions? Because right. you you have a couple days to to handle anything that you want to to do and talk to anyone else that you want to about the these different things. And probably f for in both cases, you may want to check in with Eldrick and River or with Elias Drexel before you head off on either of these these. We yes. get the spells so. So, yeah, I think that Wilhelm is would probably opt to go back to the garrison to meet back up with Elias and the team there, if everybody should, else is cool with that. We should update them. We can't leave the lanterns wondering what happened to us, and especially you, Wilhelm. We should get back mm. and give ourselves a little bit of rest and a pat on the back. For we'll take care work. of you, buddy. Well done. Yeah. Well, from from there, what you could do is Wilhelm... Rudy and Wrath, Wil Wilhelm, Paludo, and Veo could head back to the garrison and check in with, El with, with Elias Drexel. And Sebastian, Wrath, and Rudy could head back to Camp Dawn and check in with, Rath with River and Eldrick. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Well, with that, the, the groups traveled together. Uh, as far as the Drakenheim garrison and um, split off just before Shep Shepherd's Gate. Uh, is there anything your teams want to say to each other before you swap swap it up? The uh, um, so Sebastian uh, so I, I guess it's Sebastian and Wilhelm that are trading places basically. Yeah. Um, Sebastian actually uh grabs Pluto as and like pulls him over. Pluto, don't you die out there. I was going to say you not to die out there. I guess it makes more sense. You're going on a diplomatic mission. Yeah. And I yeah, peek I'm... up behind you guys. <laughs> See? Both of you don't die out there. Yeah, this is weird. Veo and I, I don't know if, when was the last time we were apart from you? I can usually hear your screams in the tent when you're speaking with your mom so like not having that as like a background noise is going to be so weird mm. guys i promise you that when i'm sleeping i will scream extra loud so that wherever you are you can hear me we can hear it oh. great. Bale, <laughs> take care of him okay i mean he'll probably do more taking care of no, I'll take care of him. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, right. I, I thank need, you. I thank need you. someone to watch over me. And I'll take care of you. And you, and you two. <laughs> Look at the, you, purple haired guy. And, and the second fighter in the group. Fighter B. <laughs> <laughs> or My name two. is Rudy. Rudy. You may call me Rudy. I apologize, Rudy. I just, I get so... 
I get so defensive. It's just he's he's just watch out for him, okay? Just watch, just keep an eye on him. Uh, Wilhelm looks over at Rudy and is like, Rudy, I'm sure you've got this. I've got this, don't worry. And if I need to pull these two uh, silly ones out of there, I will, you know, by their ears if I need to. Uh, listen, Pluto, there's no, I, you don't have to switch hair, but <laughs> listen, Pluto, there's nobody I trust more to look after uh, your friend than Rudy here. Uh, she is the most courageous combatant I've ever seen. And not only great in the battlefield, but also a great caretaker. And when she cares about somebody, she will go to any lengths to protect them. Yeah, that looks like a wicked axe, too. So mm. do you decapitate a lot of people with that? So many people, I knew it. they I get knew my way, they head cut people. off. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. He's got an eye. I see it. He's got an eye for weapons. Yeah, I just, I just, it just gives that. Like, there's still blood. There's a lot of dried blood on it too. Oh I yeah, think that's like a really kind that of. let it way. soak in a little bit. Mm. If it's gonna really like give some flavor oh, to, yeah, yeah, to the axe, you know. Yeah. All right, but don't that's worry. I will day. make sure that Sebastian's head will stay on his shoulders. And I mean, I've just adopted him right into the family. You know, Sebastian, you're like what kid thirteen now. <laughs> It's a lucky number, right? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, great. I don't have to like call you m mom or anything, do I? No, no, no. Okay, Just cool, Rudy. cool. Yeah, Rudy's Rudy's great. Rudy, uh, I'm sure we'll work together. Great. Uh, how are you with explosions happening nearby? And I mean, you've been traveling with Raph. How I'm. I've, I've heard. seen in my time a fair few explosions and probably what you can conjure doesn't even compare to them so i can handle what you got great uh we should be good everything's fine um sebastian kind of gives rudy an up and down and like looks back at pluto looks at rudy and is like yeah, it it should be okay sebastian would you like to see this book my cat gave me and i pull out my book of shadows and i <laughs> And I'm trying to put it in your Sorry, face. what did you call it? A book <laughs> of shadows? Oh, no. Raph? <laughs> I gotta tell you. Me? One thing you should know? Love shadows. Let's go. You into shadows? And as Wrath and Sebastian uh, <laughs> begin chattering about shadows under the watchful gaze of Rudy, they head towards Shepherd's Gate, uh, waving a final fa farewell as... Wilhelm, Veo, and Paluto are ushered in to Drakenheim Garrison. Well, we, uh, Your Highness, we should definitely take a rest. You were looking quite pale. You're pulsing. Yeah, you've got this like weird pulsing, like something might explode, but I don't know what would happen if that would happen usually mm -hmm. one time there was this goo and this guy touched it and it was mm. awful and yeah we don't we don't need another thing like that i feel ill <laughs> yeah you look it the, i didn't get you somewhere safe um as the um as you all, all return uh, immediately several of the hooded lanterns in the 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 garrison now um veo this is the first time you've set foot back in the garrison uh and and pluto and as you you enter along with wilhelm there is a loud horn blast and a fanfare and several of the hooded lanterns on the battlements say Command Ki King and Commander returning to the barracks. Unfurl the banners. And the as the group of you, as the two of you come back in, several of the hooded lanterns take that take out, um, come down from the uh, parapets and battlements of the barracks, and they unfurl the banners that show the crest of House von Kessel, 
the two dragons rampant flanking either side of a tower with the full emblazoned crest of the Von Kessel household. And there is a, a fanfare of several trumpets and and, um, and horns sounding as the, the group of you enter into the, um, in, into the garrison once more. And immediately, Ve- Veo, several of the Hooded Lanterns immediately come ask- asking you up for uh, whatever, you know, ready to deliver all, all sorts of reports. And first amongst them is El- Elias Drexel, who salutes and kneels. Commander, your majesty, welcome back. Elias. Elias, good to see you. We found him in this condition. This was Mm. not us. With respect, your majesty, you look horrible. You should see our apothecary immediately. There was a rat. Both a little one and a big one. Where are those wizards? Where's... We have much to discuss. Uh, We've sent them on a very important mission. I see. Well, we have accomplished a lot. We've reclaimed the clock tower, the garrison, the gates. I ha- I am overseeing everything to make sure that we are ready for all of our defenses to meet the Illyrians and whatever other threats are going to be, be befalling us. There's a lot of disturbing news that I've been receiving though, about movements of the followers, the falling fire, and much more. So I hope you've got a plan. This is different. A, a plan about the falling fire? I mean... A plan about what to do next? Uh, we have part of a plan. Uh, it's, uh... We've got a plan, Elias. It's fine. Look, the king needs our help. You did a lot here. Um, this is great. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Mr. Jackson. Um, can I call you Pluto? Is that, are we on those first name terms? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Jackson is my dad's name. I thought it was Saul. How do you know my dad? Uh, he's a Caspian Lord. It's my business to know. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm well versed in history and politics. It's kind of a big deal. I am hmm. already bored of this conversation. <laughs> I could tell you about all the lords of Illyria West. No, not yeah. You need he needs medical attention. I grab yes. him and I, I start to come steer on. Him we, towards we both the, grab you. And just start say, dragging tell you. me all about those lords. <laughs> it, yes, well, no, Caspia back in the day. As I guess, <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Gabby, our apothecary, has already taken up her position, and if. And she knows the spells to purge contamination from your body. It will not be pleasant, my king. Do you think it will be more or less pleasant than a giant rat with a stomach mouth attacking you and a sorcerer rat blasting you mm. with contamination in a solid beam? Which, which would you say is worse? I would say that situation is far worse, but... You'll still have the runs for a few days. I can handle the runs at this point. I've oh, man, it's something <laughs> have different. you had these runs? Yeah, because... this is... oh boy, hang uh, on. Get no, those, you can handle it. I start handles. patting him on the back again. I have yeah. taken Aqua Expergo before. I'm still waiting for an improved version. I I would even accept a suppository at this point. <laughs> uh, we tried that. We Not tried good? that. That was mission one. All right. It's clear that there's been, that Wilhelm's been through quite a bit. We'll give him an opportunity to recuperate, and then we will confer in the in the war room later this evening. In the meantime, I'd like updates on all the supplies, the rigmarole, you know, the things that we used to do around here. Indeed, <laughs> we'll go over those de- those details together. And- I'll just go around and look busy. I'm just going to look busy. I'm going to start looking at banners and pulling on them and like poking stuff. Yeah. So Wilhelm, you are taken down into the stockades. 
where you meet with the apothecary, a young woman named Gabi who um, mixes up several tinctures and, and, and elixirs. And as part of casting the purge contamination spell, she says, you'll need to drink. She hands you this bubbling liquid, this bubbling liquid. She says, you'll need to drink this. And then she gets out a jar that has several strange purplish leeches. Drink this and I'll apply the leeches to your back. They'll drink the blood out. The, the mixture will collect it. The whole process will take about an hour at least. You'll feel very sick for several days. I apologize. Wonderful. I <clears throat> Good. She she hands you the bubbling frothing liquid um and um and as you drink back the it just it tastes like a combination of chalk and compost. Oh, you know what they say. Uh <clears throat> Rule number 16, a new experience often leads to new lessons. And as you drink drink the fluid, she she asks you to uh pull your pull back your um your jacket so that she can place the leeches on your back. Oh. I remove the jacket. She takes these disgusting fat leeches out of a jar and with with tong she places them on your back and um she says it's best if you don't look at them after this is all done uh noted i will and don't mind just... don't mind the squirming they they drink the contamination rate right out of your body so they mutate in the process just try not to think about it oh um do you have something can can somebody put me to sleep perhaps i'd like to be asleep for a day or two yes but during this part it's very important that you're awake otherwise i don't know if you've gone into shock or or having a heart attack or dying or something like that I, you need to be conscious for this part uh splendid beg pardon I, your majesty of course i no i'm not upset with you i'm just upset um, you drink back the liquid and she and spend the next hour as she um, as she anoints uh, as she she applies like these these herbal mixtures and poultices and you feel like the squirming of the leeches on your back draining your blood out from your body and like they're sh you like you know when you're not sure what appendage is touching the back of your back like what is that? back there like you feel all the sensations on your back of like this suckling of like the leeches draining blood from your body but like their shape is definitely changing over the course of the hour and and at, at certain points she's just like oh this one's expired just pardon me and she you see her with a scalpel and you feel like her kind of get the salt the salt out to salt the leech and you hear like a this light and a popping noise and then she's like, and you feel a spill of liquid down your back, and she says, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Just what, don't, what, just what? don't look." And, and uh, she, she takes a, a rag, and dabs your back, and she pulls it away in the rat, and you catch a glimpse of the rag, and it's just covered in blood. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that my blood? Uh, uh, probably. Don't worry. It's normal. It's normal. It's normal, Your Majesty. Am I going to die? <laughs> um. After an hour, she says, no, you're not, but you do have three levels of exhaustion. I don't know what that means. You're going to have to put it in non-medical terms you're, for me. You're, well, you're going to feel lightheaded, and you'll likely have some diarrhea for the next three days. And if your urine is purple or green, that's normal. I would never call that normal, but sure. Under the circumstances, though, yes, right. You're, you're. It, it's just you'll uh, and and beg pardon, Your Majesty. Make sure that if you do relieve yourself, you uh, are, are are certain to make sure to let us know immediately. It will be very concentrated contamination, and we'll want to get it away from the barracks. Should I just sleep on a bucket? Is that preferred? <sighs> If you can sleep, um, often the 
following it, uh, it's you'll you may have some sweats for the next three days. H- here, um, you could drink this though, uh, and she mixes together a few potions. and says they'll dull the pain at least. Great, I slam them back. Uh, don't take them all at once. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh. (laughs) Well, you'll have an interesting three days, Your Majesty. (laughs) I can't wait. (laughs) Was it wild magic? (laughs) Uh, um, the. You thought your stomach hurt now? No, just a a a very big mix of magically induced painkillers. Um, so Wilhelm has, uh, is probably going to be, uh, Elias comes to Veo, you and Pluto, and says, uh, the apothecary has advised me that, uh, the king will be indisposed for at least a couple days. Perhaps you can bring me up to speed on what's happened, and I can let you know until he recuperates. Of course. Um, well, with the others on their part of the mission, um... We've come back, and after the king has recovered, we're going to go talk to um, Ophelia Reed about making amends with the Silver Order. You mean negotiating a truce? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, if that's possible. Pluto, maybe he's going to say some apologies. I'm going to try to smooth it over. Uh this stuff with the Silver Order, I feel like we're fighting too many battles on too many fronts. And we we need to try to bury the past. Oh, and we need a Flame Keeper. Mm. It, we, if we're not going with Lucretia, the Feely is really the only other one we can trust. Yeah. Veo, the first thing that you did as Lord Commander was side the Hooded Lanterns with the Academy instead of the Illyrian, instead of the Illyrians and the Silver Order. You want to go back on that now? I still stand by my decision. What I don't believe in now is that this world needs to suffer for our protection of Drakenheim in itself. I believe that Lucretia hasn't been honest with us. She hasn't told us really the truth of what her aims are. And we've learned that delirium is much more harmful than we've ever realized before. Paluto, you killed Theodore Marshall in a duel, but you killed him. And what happened that day? That really set the Illyrians off. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's, uh, there's now, no doubt that I have to atone for that. We have one, one good advantage in negotiating with the Illyrians. We have Wilhelm. He's a new face, and he is a man who can lead us rather than a child, a, a boy like George growing up, who the Illyrians definitely thought of as our puppet more than anything else. They'll see Wilhelm as a legitimate von Kessel, and he'll ha- his words will have weight, but they're going to ask for something in return, and we're going to have to decide what that's going to be, and what we're willing to do. It could also mean raising the ire of the Amethyst Academy. They've offered us a lot, too, and including getting further problems with the followers of the Falling Fire. The Lucretia Matthias is popular with the common folk now. If the Silver Order demands we do something with her as a condition for peace, we could have a peasant revolt on our hands. You're right. The common folk do flock to her. She is a magnetizing woman, but she's not an 
as being as honest with them as they realize. Hmm. We also have the it's it's the I know the people travel far, but those that live in Emberwood Village that that really have seen the horrors of Drakenheim, they know that they truly know that mm. she is she she seeks numbers. And Sebastian he showed us what she had seen. In any case, regardless of what the Silver Order might demand of us, we should go in with a plan. And with Wilhelm at the fore of that negotiation, it's possible we might be able to avert any sort of large-scale combat. There have already been skirmishes. We'll discuss this further when Wilhelm is better. But, Veo, I think that we should travel with a retinue. Make it as official as possible. We should bring some of the Royal Guard and travel down the roads and meet meet the representatives for the Silver Order in a proper way. We could send some messengers ahead and get in touch with them. We could even ask Flamekeeper Hannah in Emberwood Village to use a sending spell to contact one of their number. That way they, they, we know that they're coming and we can travel there officially with soldiers and have make this some sort of official thing. I think going unarmed would be a mistake. Who knows what kind of retribution they might have against Pluto or myself and what they might try if they find out about Wilhelm. They don't know what their mm. reaction is going to be. Let's best be prepared and, and hope for the best. Very well. What about the legitimacy? We've been questioned before. When we've brought heirs in front of anyone, everyone is always so suspicious. How do we prove Wilhelm's lineage? Well, that's part of the problem, isn't it? We do have the royal will, but there's a lot of do documentation that's still in the castle and the cathedral that we would need to bring out dirt for an official co coronation, of course. But for now, at least we have us vouching. For, we have enough power behind our vouching for Wilhelm that at least that should bring the Illyrians to the, the negotiating table. Hmm. Okay. They really need us to... I mean, isn't his blood stored in some vault underneath the thing? Yes, there is blood of his his uncle, the previous king, that is stored in the vaults, which can be used as part of a magical ritual to compare to Wilhelm's. Yes. Yeah. See, we, Pluto. And no worries. We can prove it if if I'm we just wanted to. Saying that if 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 they look to this, these are some hard questions that they may ask. You're right. Mm. You know, we we really are showing up to the table, sort of begging. I, I feel true. like we do have a bit of a disadvantage. So anything we can do to prepare ourselves for what's coming our way. I know you were asked this before, but we're not, it's not outside the question. Would you be willing to offer them Ignatius? Sebastian wouldn't want me to. <laughs> and and Ignatius has chosen me. And if Ignatius chooses another, then so be it. But at this point in time, it's not for them or for me to decide. If anyone can carry it, but I've had to look at myself a lot and decide mm. if I'm worthy. And I believe I, I am the most worthy. Okay. 
Confidently. Yeah, pretty confident. Pretty confident on that. Mm-hmm. Well, we have much to prepare. Is there anything that the two of you want to do in the next three days to prepare for your journey to meet the Illyrians? Um, no, I just want to help with whatever's going on at the garrison. Make sure everything's going smoothly. Maybe talk to Pluto about this vacation. Pluto, mm. after all of this is done, really, I want to take a trip to Caspia, like We're you going. said. We have some great food you're gonna love it i want to i heard i heard the delicacy of caspian taco night is like it's on my bucket Mm. list of foods to have in my whole life it's like the top of the list (sighs) i heard it's on like the second day of the week or something like that four words all you can eat We push as, it. Wilhelm, as you recover over the, the, the coming days, um the um after on the third day, as you're feeling most well, only one level of exhaustion, there is a large trunk outside your chamber. Um you are given a private room in the stockades that has actually been appointed not with bunk beds but actually a proper like it feels it's a small but good room and there's a trunk um with the engraving of crow and son smithy and the symbol of the amethyst academy on it oh i i i didn't expect this so soon i i how exciting I, I'm going to go over to the case, and is there anybody around, or is it just left here? There, There is a, 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 um, a note uh, on, on, on the case um, that, that says, hope it fits. Well, let's see what they've made, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop the chest open. Inside the chest is a suit of armor like nothing you have ever seen before. Um, the the suit of armor um, is a- immediately picking it up. It is not bulky. It's not heavy. But it's made of a combination of a breastplate, um, like a metal breastplate that is engraved with the symbol of like it has gold filigree made of meteoric metal on the the breastplate itself which is sculpted to to kind of fit your your form right and then it has the this the rest of the suit of armor from the breastplate itself um which is kind of kind of this bronzed material it has those roman style tassels um and kind of that roman style kilt and a pair of greaves and gloves, and then the whole thing comes together with a great green coat um, that um, that doubles as, as a hood that has frilled fur that is supple. Like it, the the cloak is the is simply put is the softest thing you might have ever touched, but the armor is oh. is is very very strong and supple well rule number 43 accept all gifts graciously and i'm gonna i'm gonna try it on it fits perfectly this is a powerful magic item um that has two features to it for rules purposes, it counts as a suit of plus three studded leather armor that has the properties of the cloak of the bat. Ooh. Hello. All right. However, instead of transforming into a bat, when you activate its power, it transforms you into a pseudo dragon. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Little tiny dragon. Oh, so cute. That's cool. All right. Studded leather plus three. Cloak of the bat, but I turn into a pseudo dragon. Nice. Looking good. You can fly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, while wearing this cloak, you have advantage on stealth checks. Perfect. Uh, in an area of dim light or darkness, you can grip the edges of the cloak with both hands and use it to fly at a speed of 40 feet. If you ever fail to grip the cloak's edges while flying in this way, or if you are no longer in dim light or darkness, you lose the flying speed. Gonna have to be careful about that. Can't go <laughs> soaring into light areas. While wearing this cloak in an area of dim light or darkness, you can use your action to cast Polymorph on yourself, transforming into a pseudo dragon. While you're in this form of the pseudo dragon, you retain your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. Oh, I can be a charismatic little dragon. The cloak can't be used this way again until the next dawn. Perfect. That was cool. Well, I look incredible. This is the most... Uh, is there like a mirror or a surface that I can admire myself in for a moment? Yeah, there's like a hand mirror. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking and I I I'm talking to nobody, but I do say I'm like, well, I do have to say that I have never felt quite as kingly as I do now. I feel like I don't deserve this armor, and I feel like I shouldn't be wearing this into battle. It looks far too expensive. I'm much more accustomed to wearing farm rags for the past few years. Um, Sounds like a barn in here. <laughs> nevertheless, uh, looks strong. So regal. I'm going to, now in my armor, emerging on the dawn of the third day. <laughs> <laughs> I emerge from the depths of my sick little room and walk into the rising sun in the garrison shining in my new beautiful armor. We're having breakfast. Just I look up for my eggs and I'm like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. That's uh, uh, Elias Drexel uh, looks up from his uh, his uh, rasher of bacon. That's more like it. Now, I can appreciate a good looking suit of armor. Yeah, you really. Always, you kept me clean, but that is clean. Look at him. Well, He's looking the part now for sure. Now we can sell you as a king. Rule number 49, cleanliness is next to godliness. I've never felt quite as lordly or godly as I do in this armor. I'm sure it's going to go through some wear and tear. Elias, are you sure it's okay that I'm wearing this? It it looks expensive. It is expensive. Right. And it's to it. Fair enough. Um... Have you felt this fur on this cloak? Let me no. feel. And I put this my face the first... on it. <laughs> like, I don't really feel anything. I'm touching it. Ooh. Because <laughs> my face is furry. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. It's incredible. It's so soft. Well, we, we ordered the best. The... Wasn't cheap, but... It will keep you alive. Pluto, we gotta tell Papa Carrot Top that he did a great job on this next he time we see him. It. I mean, I gotta talk to him Tobias, about my next suit of armor. Tobias Crow said that it was more likely that you would die that the, than the armor would be broken. Uh, great. I, I'll take that as an encouraging sentiment. He made mine, and it it's it's 
I've gone right in. I've I touched the heart. Did I touch it? I killed a lot of things. Like it mm. and look at it. It looks great. This guy, top notch, man. He makes mm-hmm. great stuff. He, he does seem to be an exquisite blacksmith. Uh are we paying him like should we get him on the payroll for he's been on the payroll for some time yes oh good 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 yeah. oh and he's uh sebastian's dad right that that checks out the hair the name mm. yes and, uh, uh, send him tips you know and just don't forget about him when you move up the ranks you know i mm. i would never as a matter of fact i want him to be the the blacksmith of draconheim of course, the academy's wards uh, and enchantments were uh, were a welcome addition as well. Right, we'll have to thank Eldrick. Was it Eldrick, River, somebody else? I don't believe it was made by them, but uh, it uh, was certainly made, made possible thanks to their work. Well, I'll thank them and uh, tell them to pass it on to whoever mm-hmm. is responsible. How are you feeling? Are you ready to set out on our plan? You look really clean. First. I Just feel purged. great. I have had the worst three days, but I did sleep like a baby last night. All right. Well, a baby who sleeps well, I suppose. Strange, strange saying. Mm-hmm. Here's the situation. The Illyrians have been marching on us for several weeks, several months and weeks now. It took them a while to muster their army. And of course, an army moves slowly, especially one like the Illyrians that have packed themselves with a full siege train. They have come with Ken. They have come with siege weapons. They have come with incendiaries and explosives. Their intent is nothing less than the complete and utter destruction of the city of Drakenheim. Everything that my scouting reports say, unlike the type of battle where you would come expecting to defeat or a besieging army by starving them out and surrounding it, that's not the the Illyrians have enough men to fully surround. The, they, they have enough soldiers to fully surround Drakenheim. They've been bringing, now of course, with an army of this size, they brought a prodigious quantity of supplies because the local area around Drakenheim will not provide anything to supply an army in terms of food or water. The Illyrians started marching up from the south. Um, Leuchten here is um, at the pass into a, the mountain pass, passage down to Illyria in the south. They've Leuchten, the, the Duke of Leuchten has allied themselves with the Illyrians and offered their soldiers in support to the Illyrian cause as has the Duchess of Geldstadt this is this is this means that the Illyrians have been able to march fully unopposed between Leuchten and Geldstadt now the um, the Baron of Landhelm on the other hand is still loyal to the to the crown and so landhelm has been preparing to become under siege by the illyrians as they march forward to drakenheim to prevent them their army from being attacked from the back hmm. now the we believe that the illyrians the bulk of the illyrians forces are currently now encamped not far from Geldstadt. But they do have soldiers that... Uh, uh, and and they now do have soldiers that are heading into the Ochtenwald, that are heading towards Todsfeld, and entreating the lords of Altbrook, Helberg, Dransmond to, to basically join their side. But they don't know about you yet, Wilhelm. Right. Well, the goal is that by the end of this, we are all on the same side. And uh, obviously, we might make a few people angry in the process, but the last thing that I want is for Illyria and Westamar to be at yet 
another war. This, Westmar has seen enough war, and our last one destroyed this entire continent. Mm. I agree with the Silver Order from everything I've seen that delirium is dangerous and I understand their motives and I think hopefully we can work something out that is agreeable for everybody. I hope I'm doing the right thing, Elias. I hope so too. Now, I have prepared a retinue of a hundred members of our Royal Guard on horseback with light supplies to, to accompany you down as far as Geldstadt for a for a, to to meet regarding a ceasefire at least in consultation with Veo we've opted to we can send a messenger and alert them that we are interested in suing for peace the hopefully the Illyrians are honorable and hopefully they will agree to meet with us it'll take us about three weeks on foot to travel from Drakenheim down to Galdstadt with a with a group that large if we were traveling with just a just us on horseback we could make it in a week but I think it's important that we have soldiers I agree on the flip side, for the Illyrians to move their army forward, if they were unopposed, they could. I estimate that you could march an army from Geldstadt to Drakenheim in four to six months, given the amount of weaponry that they have. But they would have to be allowed passage past Landhelm, and so it's possible that if they had to fight there, that that could delay them more significantly, but it's still not a lot of time. Right. Well, is it worth stopping in Landhelm uh, to talk to the Lord there? On the way, yes, we could have a short, short meeting. Landhelm, unfortunately, the biggest problem with Landhelm is that it its defenses are very lacking. Um, the it, Landhelm has an impressive castle. But the city itself, the walls of Landhelm are, well, <laughs> embarrassing, to be honest. Mm. Um, Landhelm was besieged during the Civil War, and the walls were raised. So the, the, the fact that it, yeah, it, it's not a very defensible place right now. So we need to get to the Silver Order before they reach Landhelm mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that that mm. siege doesn't happen. It'll be months before before then. We have plenty of... It, it's not a question of time, but it's useful right. to know these just in terms of lo the logistics involved. Yes. And if we don't convince them to stop, if we can't figure out a way, should we be informing the other areas, the Dukes and etc. of Wilhelm's return. I believe we should, yes. We may not be negotiating with Ophelia Reed. And even if we are, this could be orders from high up. I have considered, on, on that note, Veo, I could draft a letter that could be signed by Wilhelm, by Paluto, by Saul, Jackson, by yourself, that could be then dispatched out to the lords to formally ask for their presence. Hmm. I think it's worth considering. They they don't know what's going on yet. It's just so new that we might have support when we didn't think we did before and maybe coming up behind the Illyrian army. It will also in invite more enemies. Until now, the 
the dukes in Todsfeld and Dransmond had been reluctant to send any form of military support um, beyond what they had committed to the Hooded Lanterns already. They... Both the Dukes of, of Todsfeld and Dransmond and Altbrook, many of the Dukes fancied themselves as petty kings in their own right. If Westermar disintegrates without a king, without a monarch, the Dukes will be the most powerful ones in their respective region. They won't have anyone to answer to. So they do have something to gain for the, from the kingdom just falling apart. We talked a little while ago uh, with the Duke of Todsfeld, and he seemed at the time rather to have some disdain towards the Von Kessel name. Mm, doesn't surprise me. Yes. Um, I will have to say that that was hey, one of the harder times to keep my mouth shut during our adventure. He was a, he, him and your father did not get along well, and he sided with with your aunt during the war. I can see that. Well, but we can declare you. We can send the summons out, and we can even demand that uh, that if you want to. We can demand the dukes be present for your coronation. Well, the hard part is getting all of the dukes into the heart of Drakenheim. Uh, that seems like a dangerous play. They probably won't, but we could at least ask them to send representatives. Hmm. Witnesses. Indeed. That's the key. Now, if we setting out on this trek we've got a lot of messages to send and a lot of travel ahead of us is there anything you want to do before we leave um no I think I'm ready to go alright I'll gather up the the retinue and we'll be on our way Pluto, Veo, anything you need to address before we set out? Uh, I want to invoke the Lord Commander's seal to protect us on our journey before we go. Okay. Um, It'll be a journey of three weeks. So, you know, it, it, you got a long, a, quite a lot of travel ahead of you. Okay. I'll hold yeah. off. When okay. we get close, I'll make sure we're protected as the Lord you Commander. Do, you can do like every day, can't you? Mm -hmm. uh, I can use it uh, every day until the like. Once I use it, I can't be used till the next dawn. But technically, the hit points don't go away. How they, many hit they, points does it give? Temporary oh. hit points do go away when you take a long rest. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, the uh, all right. Well, with that, uh, I I might may maybe. Maybe Pluto's just gonna, before he leaves, talk to his dad. Yeah. Um, uh, the, and you can be there. Um, Veo, Wilhelm. Wilhelm, you said you knew my father. I I know Whether him by you, name. You know of him or know him, but he's here. Mm. And he has a like big you, stake in this as well. I think he was at that big meeting that we had when we first arrived. Yeah, I think. yeah, you've met. Yeah. yeah, you've seen him. He's a you can't miss him. Yeah. Yes, he's towering and intimidating and very oh, loud. He's a big rascal. Thick arms. Hmm. Yes. Big as big as my my chest. Yeah, a bit bigger. A bit bigger. Uh, um, you can spend an evening chatting with your with, with your father. Saul, Saul, of course, the, the magnomious man that he is and is always seen in his armor with his big beard. Well, my boy, what is it that you need before you send off? This is an interesting trek that you put, put our family on. I did it for us. Mm. You know, I, I 
I came here to hold up hold up the Jackson name above Drakenheim. And we're going to negotiate for peace. There won't be too many opportunities for us to win glory in battle, if that's going to be the case. I feel like we would... I feel like we have to make a tactical decision. Um, I once had to surrender to a giant teethed beast with tiny little arms named Big Linda. And it mm. was the but it meant that eventually I could become big. It's a long story, but the point is, is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm learning to govern and do what's necessary. And Blu this is necessary. Pluto, my boy, just remember this. Okay. That Wilhelm is a good man. But he's not your superior. He is your equal. You are a prince of Caspia. One of the heirs of the great Rex Caspian. Scion of House Jackson. You are of royal blood. Don't forget that. And when you go to meet with the Illyrians, you're not just representing... You're, you're not representing Westamar. You are representing the interests of our house and the interests of Caspia. And that's an important thing. What do you think of the decree from the High King? We need to recover from this. I feel like this is the best play, Father. I, 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 I feel hmm. like they have us cornered. We are the closest to winning the King's Moot than our house has ever been been really i feel it i mean tallied? you can't lose 300 times in a row <laughs> so you can't lose every single time for 300 years how's uh, house joplin strong they've won it a lot but it's house jackson's turn if we can secure this look at all the monsters that you've slain you'll have that vote for sure Look at all the treasure that we've brought back. Look at all the battles that we've won. We have so much going for us this time. Is there a... Remind me. You know, greatest peace talks. Biggest peace talks. Is that on the table? Or no. some kind of diplomat? Yeah, I didn't think so. No, that's not on the table. But this next King's Moot does have the several big opportunities for us with everything that's going on, with all the alliances that we have made. Most foreign alliances. There. That's one. We got that one, right? Most Locked mo in. Right. If we can get at least some of the money that we've invested in this back as treasure. Hey, here's another one. You have that blade Ignatius best magic sword. Best magic sword. This thing talks. It screams. At it's me definitely like, the best magic sword. Yeah, this yes. thing I killed. We'll, 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 we'll definitely we'll definitely get that. Yeah, probably. Right. I'm, it's not, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't probably lord that over you know people. the one of the other ones that i'm just not sure about you know there there is another one this this for best mount hmm. you have any ideas on that one do i have to ride it consistently or is it like can it be a one-time thing because hmm. i've probably ridden some you definitely things, need but... to show it off at the king's mood <sighs> okay 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 i'll keep that in mind but at one point we met a unicorn. I wonder if I could talk to him again. Hmm, that would be good. Yeah, that would. You've be gotta good. remember, the King's Moot is next year. All the houses of Caspia gather to vote on who will be which house will be the next High King. The way that it works is very very simple. 
every house gets one vote. But every house gets two votes because this is Caspia and we get two, two, twice of everything. But vote number two, you have to vote for whoever meets the challenge that you gave at the last King's Moot. Now, our challenge was that whoever could kill the biggest monster before the King's Moot would get our house's vote. So, you got that one secured. Yeah, I've killed, like, yeah, I got, like, demons and, and giant, giant delirium monsters. Yeah, no one's even close. Mm. We'll get it. We'll get it. We're close. We can do this. And I know you're explaining this not to me, but to Wilhelm and Veo, because I'm the well obvious. versed in the King's Mood. I again history. I, I, <laughs> I've read a lot of history books. Yeah. I'm learning so much about your politics. Are you going to be king, Frida? No, I'll be the king. I'm yes. the head of House uh, of House Jackson. <laughs> It'll be me that wing that, that gets the, t- the the title. But of course, that means that Paluto will be. I prince as one of uh, although he is one of my many children he's certainly one of the more accomplished <laughs> and by proxy i will know two kings yes. yes and and we will restore the name of house jackson we will reclaim we will take the place of high king it is 300 years strong that the jacksons have waited for it is our time to shine hmm very good. Well, well. Good luck. I won't let you down. Good luck at this peace meeting. It's don't, more of a negotiation instead of a peace meeting. It's more of like a. And if the Illyrians do challenge you to any duels, go for a Caspian duel this time. Yeah, the uh, Illyrians—they just escalate things. It's just like mm. Caspians. We just know how to bury it. We just know how to end it. Mm. Do you know what happened, of course, the last time we had a meeting like this? And this is one thing to be careful of, Pluto. Oh no, remind me. As many years ago, there was High King Ober and Joplin won the King's Moot. I think he was probably the, 11, the 11th or 12th of House Joplin to win the King's Moot. But... There was a problem. You see, Oberon Joplin, everyone loved him. He was a great, great duelist. Every style. He could do a Caspian duel. He could do an Illyrian duel. He could do them all. It was really great. But you see, the thing was, he could sing. And when he sang, there was magic. And when it... In what he could do. Now, of course, in Caspia, we've got a great tradition of Caspian bards, but this was the first time our High King was a Caspian bard. And the Illyrians said, Well, Ober and Joplin, he's a mage born. Well, a bard isn't a mage born. That doesn't count. Of course not. Well, uh, uh, long and short of it is that the last time there was a meeting involving a Caspian Illyrian, they sent uh, the uh, delegation from the Silver Order, and the 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 um, Grand Paladin of the Silver Order was there, and the Grand Paladin and High King Ober and Joplin. Uh, well, they had a duel, and um, the Grand Paladin killed him. And that's what started the War of the Sword. It lasted 30, it lasted 30 months. It's a long war, a lot of duels. Good war, though. Not sure who won. But just be careful, because the last time there was a peace meeting that involved the Caspian and Illyrian, there was a duel set off another 10 years of war so just try not to re- repeat those mistakes you know so, what i yeah, mean so we don't know who won that one right we're not well we won sort of like- but the caspians say they won the, we say we won the illyrians say they won we won we won yeah yeah 
So I Vail, mean, I Veo, you may want to not let me get pulled into a duel. Really rethinking uh, you coming. <laughs> well, Pluto, Maybe I if you just sit in the back. No, yeah. Pluto, the way that this works is if they challenge you to a duel, you have the right to announce a Caspian duel instead. A Caspian duel is going to be much safer. Nobody will die in a Caspian duel. For oh, it is people die all the time in Caspian duels. They get eaten by the monsters that they go out to slay. That's I would, their I, own yeah, fault. That's, just, that's, that's part of the fun. I, w- I would say... The- uh, true, true. Uh, so far, our ratio of killing monsters has uh, generally been better from what I hear. Uh, I don't die Pluto. when I fight monsters. Pluto, I hear you've killed a troll? Listen. At least one. <laughs> I've killed a bridge full of trolls. Okay? You know, oh, I oh, measure... Is that unitars. a unit of measurement? If you I end know. up in a in, in a Caspian duel with the Illyrians, kill something bigger than a troll. That's all I can say. Yeah, you... It, I mean... It just so happens I fought a Hydra once, and I came out of that alive. That's a true story. That's very Pluto. impressive. Have you ever fought a Hydra? I've fought 30 snakes, which is like a Hydra. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> that's like harder than a Hydra. Because when you... There's just lots of snakes. There was a, 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 a thousand snakes. There's a lot of snakes. And what mm. I'm trying to say is that... Yeah, I've killed something bigger than a Hydra. I don't know if I've... Told you this. I'm sure, like, you, yeah. I'm demon. Sure you, there was a demon that we just demon. went in and just murdered. Yeah. Right. It was like a named demon. I took this plate. It's used to use it for eating off of. It turns out it's like a shield of a great paladin. He's dead. I'm not. Let's do it. Saul, are we sure that Pluto's capable of a uh, political negotiation? Of course. He's my son. I'm a great political negotiator. It only follows that he would be too. Yeah. That Come was on. my assumption, Logic. yes. Logic. Look, also, you need me at that table because I have Ignatius. Yeah, yeah, that's what I bring to the table. And Ignatius listens to me, and I listen to Ignatius. And Ignatius needs me at that table. True. I accept this. There's something to be said for making amends. Even though it was in an honorable Illyrian style duel, you did kill Theodore Marshall, my boy. And he was an honorable man. I don't feel great about that. I mean, I think it's amazing, personally. I, uh, Theodore Marshall was a legendary swordsman. You should be very proud of yourself for defeating him. I, <clears throat> I, I wish to defeat, and I I came here to Drakenheim to kill monsters. And Actually, probably the we we might get a we might get a house vote on that one alone. Oh well, then yeah, maybe no regrets. But if I the still Illyrians, think I, uh, I came here to kill monsters, not men, and mm-hmm. we came here to win the king's moot. And if we're gonna keep Drakenheim, if it's gonna be a ally, an ally of Caspia's, then. We can't have the Illyrians marching on and destroying it. So we gotta, yeah. we gotta, we gotta put a stop to this. Wilhelm, if if the Illyrians do bring up the um, former problematic fight, uh, it sounded like we could pin it on that Sebastian fellow. You fought fairly in a duel. It was Sebastian who was the problem. He murdered an entire regiment. I mean, they were coming at him. Yeah, he, they, he only they has the first move. Yeah, I'm just did. saying that if they throw blame at Pluto, the the blame can be split, and we can maybe use that to persuade them otherwise. No, no, so, we don't throw. We won't Sebastian throw him under, under the, the bus. bus. No, he, I, I mean, I also don't the want carriage. them asking for Sebastian's head. Under the carriage. <laughs> He's, you know, I Wilhelm. When we sit down with this. We'll have to make some choices, but what happened on that battlefield that day happened, and I've 
I've grown a lot. I've killed a lot of more monsters, and I've had a lot of time to think about killing more monsters. So, really, they they have to acknowledge that what what's fair is fair. Mm-hmm. Pluto, I don't want to put, I don't want to throw you or Sebastian under the carriage. So, I just want to bring this up out of concern. What if they? What if in order to make amends, they ask for you and Sebastian's head? What if they? What if they ask for an eye for an eye? That would be an yeah. unreasonable demand. And if they ask for that, they'll get blood. <laughs> yeah, we we fight them. Then I, I suppose that's a possibility we need to be prepared for as well. And this is where I, I believe that we must decide who we negotiate with. Because if we're negotiating with with the Illyrian you know the Illyrians have it out for me they have it out for us um, but if we're talking to the, the rank and file they understand what's going on well and not all the Illyrians do there's a reason why we're going this route is because Ophelia is there and she is one that is trustworthy and will but we will be true. Elias chosen we will have to reckon with the Grand Paladin. We will have to eventually. I would not be surprised, to be perfectly honest, Veo, I would not be surprised if uh, to ensure a lasting peace. Perhaps this will come after the coronation, but Wilhelm will almost most certainly ha- need to travel to Lumen and meet with the Divine Matriarch personally. There's, there's, there, there, there's simply no, there's no way that we can assure a lasting peace given the circumstances without a meeting between the highest, uh, perhaps even representat- representatives of, of the the Illyrian um, Parliament. Th- there's just no way that we'll be able to secure secure peace. This this will be be first steps, but the the order to invade came from the Divine Matriarch herself, and so that. She ultimately is the one that will make the final call. And if we can't negotiate with the, the, the Silver Order on a ceasefire, then we will not be able... It's If we get the Silver Order to agree to stop, then we'll have to meet with the, the Divine Matriarch. It's not as simple as that. Not anymore. Uh, that is... I, I feel like I should have known that, but that is an intimidating... Uh, yep. That's something I'm going to have to warm up for. I'm going to need to work on my inspiring speeches a little bit more. I'm getting better. Uh, I'm getting better. I, I'll, I'll, I'm sure you two will hear a few speeches. I appreciate pointers mm. and criticism, constructive criticism, please. One step at a time. As, as I said, I would not put you in front. I, I don't think that we should have you in front of the Divine Matriarch until you have the crown on your head. But in order to do that, we need a high flame keeper. Oh, this is yes. What a tangled web we weave. Indeed. I just hope that in the meantime, the others, Wrath, Sebastian, and Rudy, can get this whole mess sorted out with the Queen of Thieves and the other relic of Saint Vitruvio. Strictly speaking, the other bargaining chip that we do have is that we could we could offer them all the relics of St. Vitruvio, or at least access to them, and Lucretia Matthias in exchange for peace. That might be what they want. But then they could summon a dragon. But if they're summoning a dragon to help us and not fight us, if the if the Illyrians, my goal personally, would be for the Illyrians not to march their army back, but to march their army forward, to do what must be done. They can complete their mission, just not fighting against us in the process. If they have this dragon, as they say, we might need it to actually rebuild the city. I'm not a big fan of burning the city to a gra- the ground. People's homes are still here. People's lives, their memories. They have a right to those things. 
But these streets are filled with monsters. And we need a lot more soldiers than what we have in the Hooded Lanterns to take it back. I think Drakenheim could be great again. But like you said, I don't think wiping it off the face of this world is the answer. Veil, I agree, but we're going to need the help. We're going to need the help of Illyria and Caspia mm -hmm. if we are going to reclaim Drakenheim. Right now, we are at odds with both. Mm. And that's why it is in our best interest to make amends and allow them to march on Drakenheim and when I started, I don't know how much you know about all of all of this, but me and my friends were hired by the Amethyst Academy to find the delirium issues and somewhat scrape them under the rug. And in the process, my eyes were open to what delirium is and what it can do. And I no longer believe that scraping it under the rug is the right choice. And I think we need to fight this at the source. I think that delirium is dangerous. And the Silver Order, who are marching on Drakenheim with the intent to, to destroy it, may have the best interests of this world in mind. Hmm. We just have to be careful. Because... This treaty, this meeting, is going to be important. And if we're going to make it this deal with the Illyrians, it needs to be a lasting deal. I agree. There could be meddling from both the followers of the Falling Fire and even the Amethyst Academy in this. We have to be careful. You're right. We have to... There's enemies all around. I mean... We, we even have to watch for the Queen of Thieves. We don't know what she's been up to and how this will throw a wrench in any of her plans either, but I just hope we're making the right decision, that we're not giving mm. up too much of ourselves and our, our, our values to see the world brought whole again. I just hope that she doesn't meddle in all this. I really don't want to have a situation, a, a repeat of what happened at the cathedral. What What happened at the cathedral? That's a long story. Maybe we'll tell it along the way. <laughs> and I think that that's a good place to end for this e this evening, as Ooh. our caravan sets out and brings Wilhelm up to speed on what happened at the cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tackled her! <laughs> yep, yep. Will! Thank you all so much, uh, as, as always, to our amazing cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing. The double whammy of both characters in their own role-playing oh, scene. That was ah, awesome, oh, you guys. Ah, oh. So well done. Um, and so, um, with all the, those th thanks out there, what a great game night. Not a single die was rolled, I believe. <laughs> yeah. A uh, huge thank you as well to Kyle for all of the work he does behind the scenes. Thank you, Kyle. We love you, and I miss your face. Um, and a huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin. Yes. Uh, once again, I, I'm pretty sure you had no idea what we were doing tonight. Uh, you just knew that we were going to talk a bunch. And, I, got, uh, I got a lot of prep to do. So I, I, all I'm going to say is I'm kind of glad we're taking a little bit of a hiatus soon because i got a lot of i got a lot of planning to to, to do <laughs> well we're setting up we're setting up some major arcs it sounds like and i'm very excited for what's yes. to come um yeah a lot has changed in drakenheim and i'm loving i'm loving where mm -hmm. it's going so thank you for running the show yeah we got a chance to even taste how monty plays every evening uh <laughs> and uh uh, maybe not as many costume switches, but uh, amazing, Monty. Thank you so much. And a big shout out to uh, all the talented artists who provide some incredible assets that we use in our stream games, and they've graciously given us permission to use them. And they can, and you can use them too. And we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, for example, Roll20 uh, miniatures 
we usually usually use miniatures by WizKids and Air Forge, but uh, we have some player character artwork by uh, Elizabeth Perot, cartography by uh, Josh O, and their music by Tabletop Audio. Anyone else, Monty? That's all for tonight, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Deeds merch, including Yes, 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 Troll Killer, as well as Shadows of Drakenheim, which comes in a poster and a sweater, as well as a t-shirt. So check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Deeds merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community helping support us behind the scenes. If you enjoy the work that we do on YouTube and want to support the channel and participate in things like our writer's room discussions, which is happening next Monday, or our monthly Q&A sessions where we do homebrew workshops and more, become a patron of our show by following the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusively for our patrons where you can discuss all things D&D, all things Drakenheim. You can talk about the uh, upcoming uh drakenheim book the uh or i guess if you ordered it on the kickstarter you already have your pdfs but a lot of chat in there amongst dms who are running their drakenheim games uh, as well as just a place to ask us anything join in on our writers rooms our q a's it's a lot of fun so join us on discord mm -hmm. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube as well. We got new videos. We got our video on playing a Hexblade Swords Bard came out today. Uh, and more cool stuff coming through to you on YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday. So check that out. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. We will be going live from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Keep in mind that that will be our last stream for a little bit uh while joe deals with his family uh, that, sounded, that sounded ominous yeah, that loves, loves his new well joe loves his welcomes. family Whoa. welcomes family loves family <laughs> deals joe with family. the trials and tribulations of being a brand new father mm. um good luck thank you thank you and uh, yeah, so after next week, we will be off for a little bit. Monty, when are we coming back? May 24th. But we May will 24th. be having some yes. streams in the meantime with some special guests. Stay tuned, uh, and we will let you know when those are coming up. Yes, and you can also check out our show on YouTube and check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time in Drakenheim. <laughs>